Maria Hernandez holds her one-year-old son Camden on her hip, a fourth-generation member of her Flores family facing the permanent loss of their Rotidian land. While in the hospital last year giving birth to her son, a movement composed of island residents ranging from scientists to Surahanus opposed to a firing range planned near Rotidian was also born. Maria knew she would have to be part of Protehi Latectum. We have these people that have come together in our group to fight against this uh, Northwest Field designation. And we just feel so strongly about it. We're, we're uh, very passionate about the cause because uh, on Guam, we just feel that our culture, our, our culture is so closely connected to our land. And, uh, you know, ancient Chamorros, they actually felt that there was a spiritual essence uh, that came with the land. And for Westerners, that sort of spiritual element was only really applied to people. For us, it's, it's uh, our spirits walk out um, among the land. Since joining Protegi the Texan, Maria has spoken press conferences and protests, urging for the halt of the impending firing range that could close access to Retidian for most of the year. When we go there for prayer visual, vigils, when we go there, um, you know, in solidarity, we're going there to speak to our ancestors who walk amongst the jungle and uh, ask them for their guidance and for, we ask them to give us strength during this hard fight uh, to put a stop to the firing range complex because it's just so destructive to so many different parts of our culture and uh, you know we, we don't want it to move forward so we're just doing everything we can to put a stop to it. This has been a personal fight for her family and other Retidian landowners for decades. My family has actually been fighting for the return of Retidian oh, yeah. since it was taken away in the 60s from my Nana and Tata. Um, my Nana and Tata actually lived on the land for many years. Uh, they, they were stewards of the land. Um, and in the 60s, the Department of Defense came and they uh, basically they told my family that they had to vacate the property um, because they needed to use it for national defense purposes. And, uh, you know, that was my family's home. That was their, uh, where, you know, the kids grew up and they were so closely connected to uh, every part of the land there and so you know it's hard to just up and move from your home and you know they were essentially forced out. My Nana and Tata fought um, the they, they just fought being moved out of their home and uh, no matter how hard they fought they still couldn't really do anything they still couldn't do anything to um, to convince the Department of Defense to just leave their land alone. In the 1990s, the Retidian land became excess and was turned into the wildlife refuge instead of being returned to its owners. At five years old, I was uh, protesting with my family members and my mom would give me and my brothers signs and we would be walking down the road to the wildlife refuge office. and. Uh, yeah, we, we just, I remember being so young and, and just seeing the anger around me. And uh, I had some family members that were arrested uh, at, at the specific protests that I'm talking about. So um, yeah, I kind of grew up around this, this um, with this idea that something was wrong surrounding Retidian, that like our family was just angered about something, but I was so young I didn't really understand what um, they were so mad about. Now that I'm older and, uh, you know, my, my parents are, you know, they're, they're uh, older now, so they're saying, okay, well, you have to take over now. So me and my cousins and my, my brothers live off, live off island, but me and, me and the family that's currently here, we are going to all the protests and we're still fighting against the firing range designation, fighting for our land back. Because if this firing range goes through, then basically that's a nail in the coffin for the land to be returned. 
That familial connection, however, was just one reason why she fights with Protehila Texan. Besides that, um, being part of the group has opened up my mind so much and I've learned about so many of the other impacts uh, that the firing range would bring. When you look at other places that are where uh, this same project has been done, it's destructive. So we don't want that to happen. We don't want uh, the firing range would be built over our northern, uh, northern lens aquifer. And so that provides 80 to 90 percent of our island's drinking water. That's, that's something that we're trying to protect too. You know, we have so many people in the community that are causing this outcry, and yet DOD still continues to move forward. And that's something that's really troubling to us as a people that we don't have a say in what's being done to our land. Maria says if you're not angry about this, then you don't have the devastating facts of what's happening to our island, and you should be angry. We're going to continue to fight. We have uh, events coming up that uh, we're going to be informing the public about that we want them to, everybody to show up because it isn't a particular Texan issue. It isn't just a landowner's issue. It's a Guam issue. We don't want more of our land to be taken away. We don't want our culture to be impacted. Uh, La Texan is one of our last remaining cultural sites, sacred sites, um, where our people once lived and, and walked the foot, the foot, where our people once lived and walked the footpaths. And so for us to not see La Texan anymore because of a firing range, that's not something that we want to happen. Because according to the military's own studies, the firing range would close Retidian for at least 75% of the year. And that's not including that's not including other groups that would be using the range, which would could possibly close it for the entire year. So this is what we're doing now. We're fighting and, and trying to stop this firing range from moving forward.